What's up world? Today I'm going to be reviewing the NSP E2 epoxy 11 foot paddle board. Now this is a little bit of an older board. Uh, I actually got it after they quit making it, but basically it's 11 feet long. It's 31 inches wide and it's four and a half inches thick. I guess that, you know, the biggest thing for me that I was looking for was something that I could do everything on. Something that I could surf on by myself that's small enough to, to be able to maneuver decently in a wave, um, but also something that is big enough to just flat water paddle on and not worry about getting dipped. Um, I can go for a dry paddle on this and I won't sink at all. It's also big enough for me to be able to hold one or even two of my kids with me on the board, uh, which was important for me. I like to be able to take my son out paddle boarding. I like to be able to take my daughter out or maybe both of them at a time. And this does great with me and my son. You know, I'm 180 pounds and with my son on here with me, he adds another 35 pounds to that. So 215 pounds. It does just fine on flat water. It doesn't really sink a bit. And th this thing is actually rated for up to 250 pounds. I kind of took a chance when I bought this. I didn't know really much of anything about paddle boards. Uh, I've been just sort of surfing up until that point. Um, when I got this, I thought, well, for the price, we'll see what it does. And so far I have not been disappointed. Now, when you're riding waves, the good thing about it being this long, about an 11 foot board, is that it catches everything really easily, um, which is great for me because uh, I just learned how to surf this year and I was flat water paddling and I thought, well, let me try to just stand a paddle surf and see how that goes. I took this thing with me on vacation to Destin, Florida and the waves there were really small. It's in the Gulf, so there's not a lot of swell. And this thing was able to catch pretty much anything. Um, and so one, that's one of the things that I love about this board is, like, man, you, you can get paddle boards that are for surfing that are supposed to, you know, be smaller and more maneuverable. But I know if I take this out on pretty much any day, unless it's completely flat, I can catch something. And I found myself often taking this as a backup on a surfing day if I show up and there's not much that I can catch on my surfboard, I can always put this in the water and catch it. Honestly, I've been doing that a lot lately. It's really fun to surf this thing. Uh, it took me a little bit, and that's one of the downsides of it being 11 feet long, it took me a little bit to, to figure out how to turn well on it, um, how to actually go down the line. bigger boards, um, you know, you can, you can shift the weight toward the back and, and all that kind of stuff and, and try to turn regularly, but I found the best thing is taking my feet, uh, you know, sort of from their normal stance and actually putting my front foot over here on the uh, side of the board. Maneuverability is not the greatest on it, but once you sort of realize how to shift your weight properly on it, it's not bad. Um, and like I said, it, it can ride anything on a relatively small bay. One thing that's nice about this board is the entire deck pad is covered. So the whole thing is non-slip, um, which makes it nice because sometimes it's, it's kind of fun to like walk up the board and nose ride a little bit. Um, because it is a real long board, you can do that. Um, and I don't have to worry about my feet slipping off of that or having to put wax on it or anything. Um, it's obviously right here, these gray sections are more grippy in the center. They have sort of a square pattern that's going on. And then uh, these white and blue areas are just a flat 
sort of uh, foamy surface. So this does have bungees to hold stuff in. And so when I go to the river, um, I'll put my flip flops or a backpack with my keys in it or whatever. I'll put that right there. Um, what I actually use these for when I go to the beach is I've been able to use it to take a GoPro on a handheld mount like this. Um, and I actually fold the GoPro up and put it under a bungee here, pull it, put it under the center tube, pull it all the way back to the last bungee strap and I tie it up with this tether and I have a board mount. So you can see in these clips that I'm showing that it works really well uh, having it mounted like this. Um, sometimes it'll turn a little bit or sometimes when you're going into a wave, it'll flip the GoPro down, which is not a big deal. You just turn it back up. But uh, this saves me having to, you know, install a board mount on this and it gets that great, um, you know, board view when you're surfing. Uh, sometimes I'll do the paddle mount too, but most of the time this is just easier. I don't have to worry about trying to film myself and it's a great use of these bungees. If you flip the board over, um, you can see it's pretty much flat all the way up. It does have a nice rocker at the nose, um, but the, as far as the concave of the board goes, there's not much concave, but there is a slight dip, I would say. I guess one of the downsides was in catching waves, um, it seems a little bit ill-equipped for catching waves. But the best thing that I found for that was adding these additional two thruster fins on the back. So when I got it, it just came with this single center fin. Um, and this is a standard fin box mount. This came with an eight inch fin um, with a decent amount of rake on it. And honestly, that fin uh, just didn't hold me in waves well enough because it's a big board. I'm not the lightest person in the world. And it just, I don't know, it didn't hold me in. And so I thought, well, I could buy a larger, like maybe a 10 inch fin, but I was on vacation when I was learning this and um, I didn't have any other fins with me, but I did have two thruster fins from my other surfboard. And these are just um, standard FCS fin boxes here. So I put those in as soon as I put those thruster fins in, it was night and day difference. So the thing I would say about this is if you're gonna do flat water, single fin is fine. But if you're gonna surf with it, I would highly recommend putting in the thruster fins. Now mine didn't come with it. I don't know if this board originally did when it was released, but um, luckily I had some laying around. I put them in and since then I haven't had any trouble catching waves at all. This board weighs about 30 pounds and I will say it's a little bit heavier uh, coming from being used to just having to carry around an inflatable board this feels like a really heavy board um, so it's a little bit of a drag getting it from the car to the beach and back but um, you know I like to think of it as a good workout and if you just focus with one arm on on the board and don't try to carry other stuff with it, then you should be fine. Um, maybe if you are a lot smaller in size, uh, maybe you're not as strong, this would not be a good board for you if you have a really small frame. Um, it would be plenty big to catch waves, but lugging this thing back and forth is definitely a bit of a chore. Um, so as far as the weight goes, I am not a huge fan of it. But on the flip side, it has plenty of volume to hold me and uh, to keep me above the water and to hold me and kids if I want to. And we have a blast together as a family. Um, let's show you some clips here with me and my son on there. Um, even both of us standing up with no problem and uh, it doesn't lose stability, it doesn't wobble at all. It was uh, really easy to do that. So overall, if you're interested in getting a board that is really good for basically anything, I highly recommend this or something like this. I realize they don't make these 
particular boards anymore. But NSP has plenty of other models that are very similar to this that'll have the same uh, dimensions, the same volume, the same weight ratio, and that kind of stuff. I also recommend this, especially if you are, uh, let's say, 170 pounds or heavier. Um, this board will get you through anything. It will allow you to gain weight if you want to. <laughs> um, but it'll hold, seriously, it'll hold anything. It does really well in pretty much any situation. I've never had to worry about the stability of it. So pros and cons. Pros, it can handle any situation and basically any amount of weight that is on it. Pro number two, it's really, really stable and it does great on waves with the two thruster fins installed. Pro number three, these bungee straps make for a great GoPro mount. Pro number four, it is super, super durable. I got this thing in rough shape and it had holes in it and it was a renter's paddleboard and I haven't had any issues with it at all. Pro number five, the non-slip material covers the entire deck pad, which is great for me wanting to explore the deck and also multiple riders. Pro number six, it's NSP, a highly trusted brand. They've been doing this for a long time and they know what they're doing. So cons, con number one, it's pretty heavy. It's over 30 pounds, which is a lug from the beach and back. Con number two, it doesn't do well surfing single fin. It really needs those two thrusters to be able to catch waves well. Con number three, it's hard to maneuver, at least at first. You really have to learn how to shift your weight in order to maneuver it the way you want it to go. Con number four, it's 11 feet long, so it's not fitting in any cars. You have to strap it to the top of your vehicle, pretty much, unless you have a massive van or something like that. So in summary, I would recommend this board to anyone starting out, just trying to do some flat water paddling or um, even rougher conditions or even sup surfing. It's not perfect for sup surfing, but for me, it's been a great way to learn how to sup surf. And once I've learned the ins and outs of how to maneuver it, I'm really starting to like it. It just has a steeper, maneuvering learning curve than some boards for subsurfing. But as an all-around board for anyone who is uh, not a lightweight and who maybe wants to take a kid or a pet on the board with them for flat water, I recommend this board all day or something like this board that's the same dimensions and the same sort of shape. I hope you guys enjoyed this review video. I don't always do review videos most of the time. I'm just doing my vlogs, but I figured, hey, I have all this equipment for the vlogs, so why not review what I have? So there'll be more of these coming soon. Hopefully this has been helpful to you if you're thinking about buying a board that is similar to this or buying a board to try to get into subsurfing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, give my channel a subscribe. You can check out the channel for my vlogs where I'll surf, I'll sub surf, I'll flat water paddle, go on all kinds of crazy adventures with my family. You can also check out the channel for other review videos. There's a few of them right now and more will come soon. Make sure to give it a subscribe if you like the videos that are coming out. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.